Hi friends today i am going to discuss about organophosphorus poisoning which is the major clinical and public health problem in rural asia exposure occurs during manufacturing mixing spraying or deliberate suicidal ingestion of the pesticide organophosphates are agriculture insecticides act by inhibiting acetyl cholinesterase This is the enzyme responsible for degradation of acetylcholine therefore it exerts their toxicity by resultant accumulation of acetylcholine at cholinergic receptors as you know to ensure normal return of physiological activity of the enzyme new enzyme must be generated or an antidote must be supplied to the system coming to the mechanism of action as i told earlier organophosphates inhibits acetylcholinesterase at synapses and red cell membrane and butylcholinesterase or plasma cholinesterase at plasma inhibition of butylcholinesterase is not symptomatic but acetylcholinesterase inhibition leads to accumulation of acetylcholine at receptor sites in the synapses of autonomic nervous system central nervous system and neuromuscular junction so resultant over stimulation and the subsequent autonomic central nervous system and neuromuscular features of organophosphates are well known by all of us now coming to the diagnosis of op poisoning it is most often clinical history of exposure to the compound and signs and symptoms of diffuse parasympathetic stimulation points towards the diagnosis Confirmation of the diagnosis is by laboratory measurements of levels of both acetylcholinesterase and pseudocholinesterase. As I said earlier, activities of both acetylcholinesterase and pseudocholinesterase levels are decreased with organophosphate poisoning, but measurement of red cell cholinesterase levels is more specific than measurement of pseudocholinesterase levels. Because concentration of pseudocholinesterase levels decreased in other conditions like pregnancy immediate postpartum and acetylcholinesterase poisoning these are the guidelines usually used in the clinical practice if red cell cholinesterase levels are between 30 to 50% of normal it indicates exposure if levels are 20% or less of normal symptoms will occur if it is more than 50% inhibition of the enzyme toxic manifestation occurs now coming to the management of op poisoning first and foremost thing to do in op poisoning is decontamination by taking the patient to the well ventilated room and remove all the clothing and give thorough soap and water wash gastric decontamination has no role in organophosphate poisoning our priority should be airway and hemodynamics control rather than gastric decontamination coming to the supportive therapy airway protection either giving a supplemental oxygen or by securing the airway with intubation hemodynamic stability should be assured by use of intravenous fluid boluses or vasopressors and treatment of arrhythmias or seizures if it is present coming to the definite therapy which includes use of atropine and oxymes atropine is the anticholinergic drug of choice in op poisoning there are variable regimes for doses of atropine but most commonly applied regime is doubling dose regime in this regime initial bolus should be 1 to 3 mg after 5 minutes of giving bolus dose we should check for heart rate blood pressure pupil size and sweat and chest sounds if no improvement found double the original dose and review the patient every 5 minutes and double the dose till the response is found if response is present either cessation of the doubling of the dose or smaller doses should be considered here response means increase in heart rate more than 80 beats per minute systolic blood pressure more than 80 mm of mercury best end point of atropination is chest should be 
free of crocules and auscultation other clinical endpoints are dry axilla and pupils of reasonably normal size once atropination completes 10 to 20% of the total loading dose should be infused every hour for 24 to 48 hours then decrease by 1/3 to 1/4 of the previous day dose likewise atropine should be weaned over 3 to 5 days there is a confusion about bolus doses versus infusion doses but recent evidence suggests that infusion of atropine reduces the fluctuations in blood concentration of atropine and thus the need for frequent monitoring of the patient while atropination one should aware of signs and symptoms of atropine toxicity which includes agitation fever ileus and urinary retention if it is suspected with whole atropine dose for 30 to 60 minutes and administer intravenous benzodiazepines for sedation if symptoms improves restart atropine dose at 70 to 80% of the previous dose if there is a recurrence of similar symptoms add injection glycoperolate 7.5 mg diluted in 200 ml of normal saline to be infused over 24 hours oxem therapy oxems are the acetyl cholinesterase reactivators cleaves organophosphate acetyl cholinesterase complexes and free the enzyme most commonly used oxem is prolidoxem all oxem should be given before aging process occurs loading dose of prolidoxem is 30 mg per kg over 20 minutes followed by infusion dose of 8 mg per kg body weight per hour suppose an average 70 kg body weight patient 2 g should be the loading dose followed by 500 mg per hour should be given as infusion but recently a couple of randomized clinical trials found that higher doses of prolidoxem reduces the case fatality rate reduced mechanical ventilation time and lesser chances of pneumonia in these trials they used loading dose of 2 grams followed by 1 gram either every hour or every fourth hourly for 48 hours followed by 1 gram every fourth hourly until recovery occurs and these trials also found that larger doses of prolidoxem could have benefit if the patient treated early and given good supportive care empirically all oxems should be continued for 7 days benzodiazepines are the most commonly used drugs in op poisoning because delirium is the most frequent problem associated with op poisoning causes of the delirium includes either poison itself atropine toxicity hypoxia or alcohol intake or other underlying medical causes diazepam is the first line of therapy for seizures in op poisoning if it is not available alternatively midazolam or lorazepam can be given other therapies like magnesium sulfate and clonidine can be used in organophosphate poisoning both these reduces the release of acetylcholine from presynaptic terminals and improves the function at the neuromuscular junction and reduces the cns over stimulation here i want to add a note on intermediate syndrome because it accounts for 20 to 80% incidence usually develops 24 to 96 hours after resolution of acute symptoms of op poisoning intermediate syndrome causes may be due to prolonged acetyl cholinesterase stimulation partial or inadequate oxem therapy muscle necrosis oxidative stress related myopathy or desensitization of post synaptic nicotinic receptors classical features of intermediate syndrome is sudden onset of neuromuscular weakness characterized by difficulty in neck holding other features includes cranial nerve paralysis respiratory muscle weakness decreased or absent deep tendon reflexes treatment is mainly supportive if respiratory muscles are involved 
पेशेंट में रिक्वायर मैकेनिकल वेंटिलेशन एंड गुड नर्सिंग केयर यूजुअली दिस सिंड्रोम इज सेल्फ लिमिटिंग एंड रिजोल्यूशन ऑकर्स इन टू टू थ्री वीक्स डिलेड पेरिफेरल न्यूरोपैथी दिस इज द लॉन्ग टर्म कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ ऑर्गनोफॉस्पेट पॉइजनिंग इट ऑकर्स वन टू थ्री वीक्स आफ्टर एक्सपोजर कैरेक्टराइज बाई डिस्टल एक्जेनोपैथी There is valerian type degeneration of auxons and myelin of long nerve fibers of both central and peripheral nervous system. Signs and symptoms are includes paresthesia and cough pain, ataxic gait and decreased deep tendon reflexes. Weakness of the distal limb muscles may present with foot drop and claw hand. Later stages patient develops spasticity hyper reflexia and clonus as there is no definitive specific therapy permanent motor deficit is the usual outcome so friends thanks for watching my channel please do subscribe medical tidbits thank you